welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Peggy Bartz, and with me today is Chris Barnett, and we are going to talk today about the planning and the future of Orient Township, the long-term planning and the short five-year plan. So welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here to talk about a very important topic in our community. It is a great topic. So I'm going to start with a quote that came from Felice Bell, and she talks about cities. So here's what she said. Beyond the planning and the policy are everyday people. It is in their stories that the city is born. Stockbrokers and stick-up kids and baristas and bartenders and actors moonlighting as cater waiters. She's from New York, by the way. Private investigators, teachers, corporate lawyers, janitors, financial planners, business owners. Those are the unseen people of everyday life. And that is who lives here in Orion Township. So we are planning, you are planning for them for the future of this community. We are, I, I think it's an awesome quote because it really kind of defines our work, not just with this project that we're gonna talk about today, uh, but just in general. I think um, oftentimes, I think if you just look at what's going on in our world, people are a little bit burned out on politicians, on, pol on politics in general. Um, but I think the reason I love my job so much is because I feel like it's the closest level of public service to actually our residents. And so we can interact a lot more easily than maybe they can in Lansing and DC. We can listen to the voices, listen to our, our residents, and um, that's what this is all about. So we're embarking on updating our five-year master plan. Um, it's, it's by, first of all, in the state of Michigan, by law, we are required every five years to update our future land use plan and our master plan. So uh, today I'm gonna talk to you a little about, about the, some of the high-level aspects of that and why it's so important for us to hear from our residents and then you're going to hear from the expert, Tammy Gerling, who's our Planning and Zoning Director, um, kind of a little bit more about the process. But in general, um, I'll say this a few times, we want to hear from our residents. Okay, let's say that again. We want to hear from the residents. You've heard it from our Orient Township Supervisor. And to that end, there is a survey, which I took this morning, online, orienttownship.org. Yes. It is right in the header of the uh, we're living as a vacation it, you click on it and you take the survey yeah how long did it take you well i read fast so eight minutes eight minutes is pretty good um yeah we're telling people it's five to ten minutes of their time um this is just one uh way to give input and so so what what we're asking people to do uh especially if they live here they don't have to own they could be a renter they could be a student uh we want your input so really it's the opportunity for someone that lives in our community to tell us, the people that we, that, that we work for, and I like to speak, I speak to a lot of the fourth grade classes when they're learning about government, and one of my things I like to tell them is, um, who do they think my boss is? And then a lot of times I hear the president, the governor, um, and I say, I have like 40,000 bosses. The people that live here are the people that I work for, and everyone that works at the town of Paul, uh, we, we are here to serve our residents. And so the goal of this process is the more input we can get, it's not gonna be Chris Barnett's idea or Tammy Gerling's idea or just Peggy's idea. Now that's a combination of those, those thoughts, um, but really the more, the better, the, the larger cross section of our community that we can get to respond, the better the plan is gonna be and better for the people that live here. So it's really important. Um, I know we live in a very busy, you know, to sit down for five minutes and do anything is challenging sometimes for people, but we're really trying to stress that uh, this is a worthwhile investment of people's time because we are going to take every, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're going to put that all together as we are developing this plan. Okay, good. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in a minute. Um, so even the fourth graders, if you could somehow get their parents to do this, or high school. You have so many kids in the high school, and there's kids interested in civic um, pursuits. You know, let's get that out there. Is it advertised in, of course, the Lake Orion Review probably has yes. something. Um, you have a Facebook page? We do. So we're doing a lot of social media. We realize not everyone's on social media. Um, it's Obviously, there's been articles in the local newspaper, the Lake Orion Review. Uh, we've done videos. We're doing this. We're hoping to share this, this out. So if you're watching this and you're willing to just share this uh, video link on your Facebook page or send an email to your homeowners association group, the more people that we can reach, the better. 
Good, and I'm sure they're going to put the link to right to the township office yep. so that you can go and click on and it. And we met, wanted to make it really simple. So yeah, like you mentioned, it's right on our homepage. You can click on the link to the master plan update. How long do we have to do the survey? So the survey is going to, I think it's going to end in the next uh, week or so. And, and so mid, mid to end uh, March. Uh, okay. So we've had it up for a few weeks now. Um, we have a roughly 600 responses, which is, is a good number, but obviously the more the better especially when you consider that we have uh, roughly 13,000, just under 13,000 households that make up the entire township. Um, so, I mean, in my, our ideal scenario, we'd love to hear from everyone. We know that that's not possible. Um, but, you know, some, some of the ways this can get shared out is people in their churches are talking about it or people uh, in their homeowners association email groups or, or whatever. So, um, and we've done, since I was uh, first elected in 2012, in 2013, we started our first uh, community survey. We do those on the odd years and so we've done those every year since 2000, every other year since 2013 and we've taken that information that our residents have spent time to answer the questions we put out there and it's really guided a lot of policy in the township, um, some decisions. For example, we've heard loud and clear that our residents love the natural resources and the amenities. That's why a lot of people located themselves here. So that was one of the main factors when the township board decided to purchase the um, Camp Agawam from the Boy Scouts. Yes. Um, there was an opportunity for developers to sweep in and turn that into a really nice neighborhood on a lake. And uh, we knew that one of the highest priorities when people were choosing to live here, because this is how they answered in uh, our community survey, uh, what were the parks and the lakes. So our board made it a high priority to spend a million dollars um, to purchase the camp to protect it so it could be a park hopefully forever. Yes, so you also told me just recently that uh, of the township uh, acreage, which is 36 square 30, miles? We're six miles by six miles, yep, 36 okay. square miles. 30% of that, at least, is parks. Correct. Now, and lakes, parks and lakes. Parks and lakes. During COVID, a lot of people discovered the parks. Yes. Uh, Orion Oaks has a beautiful dog park. A lot of people go to that. But Orion Oaks Dog Park is connected to the larger park, which is almost a square mile. And that is a absolutely beautiful park. It is. It's a gem. Um, but it's, so many people don't even know it, it's there. That's so true. There, a lot of our residents are just now discovering um, some of the, and, and thanks in part to COVID, um, are for trying to find unique and creative ways to get outside of their homes. And we've made a big push with our Parks and Recreation Department um, to, to give lots of opportunities for people to get out there. Um, the other thing we've been able to have a, a, a really high level of success, probably um, one of the most successful communities in all of Southeast Michigan for capturing grant dollars. Uh, and so we've made some really key trail connections. We're on the Iron Bell Trail, which is a trail that connects Ironwood, Michigan, all the way in the Upper Peninsula to Belle Isle in Detroit, and it runs right through Orion. And because of that, we've been able to add some beautiful boardwalks and some awesome trail amenities. Um, millions of dollars in grants have come into our community. And, and to me, that's the fun part of my job. We're doing things like that that sort of increase the quality of life um, and that's what, that people have the opportunity through this whole process um, to say they want more trails or, you know, when we did Baldwin Road, which has been a huge project that I've been working on literally since the day I started this job, we wanted to make it walkable and we wanted to make it um, beautiful. So with some pocket parks, which we already have one built, the Playful Dragon sits down at Baldwin, uh, down near Panera Bread or down, down near the shopping district. Um, so that's, that's been a high priority. And that's not just because this is what Chris Barnett thinks. This is because we've gotten a lot of input through the years from our residents. Okay, let's, let's uh, put the bit good, bad, and the ugly on the table just for a second and talk about Baldwin Road. I happen to live off of Baldwin Road. Uh, my whole house would shake while they were building. Yes. And I went and talked to the contractors a few times just because it was fun. So there are five roundabouts. Um, however, as a person who used to use Baldwin Road, traffic flows like crazy through there now. Correct. That there's a, a short racetrack on there that you may or may not know about. <laughs> right after you hit Walden, there's a straightaway, and everyone takes advantage of that. Okay. <laughs> because well. then they have to slow down. But in terms of movement of ease and traffic, it's much better. And so in order to make a master plan and to have all those things happen, you have to have the infrastructure already present to accommodate what is coming and what is going. Right. Just like when you plan a subdivision, you have to plan out the street map before you put the houses in. And so in a, in a, from the small microcosm to the large, the 
township right now is working on that master plan that's going to look at everything, not just for five years, but for the future, for which is coming way sooner than we think. When I bought my car, I asked the car dealer what's coming. He said electric cars, self-driving cars. In 10 years, you'll call up your car and say, it won't be your car, it'll be a car, and it'll take you to where you need to go. And, and you know, we know Amazon's working on those. Sorry. Uh, Amazon is working on those um, drones that are going to deliver things. So that may change the face of grocery, retail, everything. So all that has to be taken into account and, in this process. That, that is, I mean, you, you really summarize it well because we're not just looking at next month or next year. And, you know, we know there are residents that have lived here for many, many years, grew up here, were born here, were born and raised in remembered when Brown Road was a two-lane dirt road before Meyer or in Costco and anything else that's there. And so we're cognizant of that. Um, the other thing that I, I love to mention to people when they think that we just have too much development is what we already kind of talked about. A third of our land is, uh, is made up of lakes and parks. And there's no other community around us that can say that. And that will always be protected. But we still have tracts of land that are privately owned. People have personal property rights to sell and or develop their property. And so what's important for us is to understand what types of developments would, could, could potentially go in those pieces of property. And one of the things that we know, um, I don't even think it's debatable, I think it's just a, a fact, is the housing demands have changed from where they were five, 10, even just a couple years ago. Okay, tell, tell, us, tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, look, I, I remember when I first got married and was looking for my first home. Um, I was looking for a home with a large yard um, the white picket fence, right? You know, um, and and the new, the younger generation, it, it, that's actually, they don't want that. They're looking for walkability. They want to be able to go to the grocery store, to a restaurant, to the gym, and never get in a vehicle. And um, it's it, that's important to them. And it's not even just the younger generation now, it's the empty nesters that are looking for yes. simplicity, right? They don't want to have to take care of a large pr property. They want to just make sure, they want a clubhouse, they want amenities. So we want to, um, make sure it's important in a community that you have a diverse offering of housing options. That's one of the things we're going to be looking at during this process. Um, and so I think, again, the, we think we have an idea because we can look at how the, the regional and uh, national trends in housing and things like that. But the best way is to not look at what they're saying on a national level. It's to hear directly from the people that live here that say, I would love to downsize. I don't want to move out of the community. I love the school district. I love the parks but there's not really a housing option for me. That's, that's what this whole process is gonna allow people to do. Right, who wanna stay in the community that may not wanna live in their 3,000 square foot home with a 2,000 square foot basement. Correct. Correct, awesome. And then there's people who love tiny houses. And that's a possibility too, a, a small community that has tiny homes that's been done in other communities. I mean, there's many, many different ways to do things. One of the things we know is that Orion Township will be a location that people will want to be for a long time because of the natural resources. If you look at some of the surrounding communities, you'll see that um, they just don't have, you, you go a little bit to the east and people say, when we do have some of these developments coming, a lot of times our residents that are coming to the podium to, to voice their displeasure have said, you know, we don't want to become like Macomb County with just neighborhood on top of neighborhood um and cut every tree down and we don't want that either and again that's why i think we are different and we're unique because we have all these natural resources um but i also think it's important that for those people that want to live in our community that we really don't have anything to offer that we do listen to their voices as well in this process excellent excellent so okay. i think that's that's a good place for us to pause because tammy girling who's our planning and zoning director um is really heading up the process for the township of this, it's, it's, it's almost an 18 month process. We've, we're just a couple months in. There'll be lots of touch points, but I think it'd be great if we can bring her in and you can hear from the expert. That would be wonderful. And Tammy is the planning and zoning director, director of the township. And we will continue with her in just a minute. Thank you for your beautiful overview of the, um, the whole process. So please go online and take that survey. Uh, that is really important. It is your township. You heard him say he works for you. And uh, go take that survey and let's hear your input. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and Peggy, thanks so much for having me on and You're welcome. Uh, talking about this very important topic. Okay, well, that wraps up segment one of this. Thank you very much.
and welcome back to Orient Outreach. This is part two of the planning and zoning and the amazing survey that is happening in Orient Township. And my guest for this portion is Miss Tammy Gerling. She is the zoning and planning uh, department head at Orient Township offices. So very much welcome to you. Thank you, it's very great to be here. So yeah. tell me exactly, um, your job is to plan a lot of planning. Is it like making Lego villages? It, it, well, a little bit more complex than that. Okay, yes, can you yes. tell me how the process, first of all, how long have you been with the township? I have been with the township for 15 years. I've been in three different departments. I started in Parks and Recreation um, for a short time and then I progressed to the assessing department for about five years. Okay. And I have been in planning and zoning since. Excellent. Okay, so your job is to plan and zone the property and we just talked earlier with Chris, so there is 30% of our property in the 36 square miles is lakes and rivers, I'm sorry, lakes, not rivers necessarily, <laughs> um, and parks. So that means the rest of the 60 some percent is all land. And as you know, driving down, those of you who are residents know, driving down say Walden Road between M24, there's a lot of vacant land. There is, there is. Yes. And they all have property owners and they all have rights and, and at some point in time we usually get a call from them with uh, interest in, in developing within the township and I'm the first call they make usually. So you are the first point of contact. I am. They I call am. the planning person and say, hey, I'm thinking of, so let me ask a question. I'm going to pretend like I'm a contractor or somebody with a big idea. I'm thinking of putting a Tesla dealership in Lake Orion. Okay. Every parcel within the township has a zoning distinction. We have a zoning map which shows what it currently is owned and within each district has allowed uses. So the first thing I would do is pull up the property and see what it's owned. Go to our zoning ordinance number 78 and there's a list of what you can have there. So an auto dealership would be listed, if I'm remembering correctly, within our general business. Okay. Um, and I'd have to look and see if the, the, inform the, ah, excuse me, the property you were interested in was properly zoned for the use you wanted. Okay, my daughter would love a Tesla dealership, by the way, uh, but that's her dream, not, not <laughs> necessarily everybody else's. That does not mean we're putting a Tesla yeah. dealership in Orient Township, just for you. I was using it as an example. So let's say a small, uh, a restaurant wants to come in. Yep. The, the parcel of land has to be zoned, which means is for that use only. You cannot put a restaurant in a zoned residential area. Correct. Correct. Okay, so the job of the, the this long-term five-year pl plan is to take all of the existing properties and decide what is going to best fit in, and this is where the community comes in, correct? Yes and no. So okay. you, have, you have every property has a current zoning. Within the master plan, we have what's called the future land use map. Okay. And that is, if we could start over from scratch right now with the way that the community has changed over the years, what would we want every property to be zoned. So it's not our zoning map that's changing, it's our future land use map, and that is a part of our master plan. Okay. So in your example, you might still be zoned for um, a small restaurant, but perhaps maybe not a drive through restaurant, if they're two different um, zoning districts. Uh, within the future land use map with modern planning principles, we might acknowledge that with the number of homes that were created in the area and the desire for walkability, that um, a, a parcel perhaps zoned for office and with COVID and, and less offices um, needed, um, perhaps we feel our future in land use would show that that particular parcel to be where we want to see a restaurant either with or without a drive-through capacity. Okay, because that's going to affect traffic. If you're to all you have to do is drive past the uh, Starbucks on Baldwin <laughs> to realize that that is not a fantastic, but that was here a long time ago. And there's a number of factors that go into it. Um, the traffic, the, we call it a squawk box, which there's better technology now, but you know, you go back 20 years and you had the, where you placed your order, and it could be quite loud if there was surrounding residential. Okay. Um, we had to look at, you know, was it appropriate for a squawk box to be in that general area? Wow, so you go from the micro, the macro, down to the smallest things like whether or not the squawk box is going to disturb the people around you. Absolutely. I don't know that people know that there's that much detail put into those ideas. It so is. it's somewhat like having a giant puzzle in a box and there are certain pieces that have to go into certain places and there's other pieces that 
possibly there's people call and say I want this property rezoned that means I would like to use it for a different intention and so your job as the five-year plan is to help people figure all of this out correct you know it, there's there's a community changes the industries change. Could you say that one more time? Communities uh, community change. Community changes. Yes, yes community they changes. do. Um, the master plan, the, the, the goal is 10 to 20 years out. Okay. But by state law, we have to look at it every five years because it, it, there are changes that occur. Um, sometimes you can look at it very, very high level and not spend a great deal of time on it. Uh, Orient Township decided this time, compared to the last time we did it in 2015, that we want to do a major overhaul. We are taking 18 months on this and looking at um, goals and, and uh, changes in the industry and, and changes in the demographics and, and what do we want um, for the community. And that's where the citizens come in. Um, okay, and we have such a diverse community. We have you know, baby boomer ages mm -hmm. and those people are going to age as time goes on. The baby boomers in 20 years will be a lot older. And we also have a lot of young people in this community. Our schools have been growing. The early childhood center is being built, so we know there's a lot of children. And then mm -hmm. uh, we have to account for, obviously, COVID changed so many things, electric cars and um, uh, self-driving cars and all that mobility and, um, and drone technologies, which I'm almost positive. I'm still waiting for the Jetsons where we can drive through <laughs> the air in cars and it would make roads less crowded. Yes, I agree. No roundabouts. <laughs> that technology does exist, by the way. They just haven't figured out how to use it. And, and we need to add that within our master plan. Yes, we do. <laughs> technology is moving us so fast. Correct. I mean, you even look at, since COVID, um, the change in parking lots and having yes. the pull up to, to have the groceries brought out to you. You know, even the smallest thing changes how plans are laid out as development comes in. The Kroger on Baldwin has a whole section now yep. for the delivery. And so does Myers, and so does the Kroger in downtown Lake Orion. They've all changed. And those are like almost on a dime changes, yep. but they're not going anywhere. Correct. Right. right. That's a lot to take into account. And, and we acknowledge also that, that um, in any job, you can get to a point that you have, I don't want to say tunnel, but that's where it's so important to get the ideas from the community. Maybe there's something we haven't thought of. Um, we are not mind readers. We're not quite sure exactly what, what, maybe the younger generation wants something different and the older generation wants this. So we really, really need the input from the community. So let's talk about the uploading pictures. Oh, yes. Portion. Wonderful, wonderful feature. So on our website is um, under master plan. Under master a, plan. It's the main tab on, on the homepage. Yes. Um, is a feature called picture this. Picture this, okay. Uh, if you see something, you know, understand negative. We need negatives and positives. But if you have a picture of something you think needs changing, then you can take a picture of it and upload it and place it on the map where you see it. But what I really enjoy about the feature is, you know, if you're traveling, um, the best example I give, I learned this at a class on, on planning at one point in time, um, sometimes people just don't like the look of a building. Uh, maybe they don't want in their downtown a building that looks like a fast food fried chicken establishment. Okay. <laughs> I'm not giving any names. So maybe you'll find, I believe there's one in Kentucky that looks like a home. It looks like an estate that um, you wouldn't even know that it is a fast food fried chicken restaurant. So that would be a prime example of a picture of it in another community of something you see that you could take that picture, put it anywhere on our map, because really, unless you have a specific location that you're thinking it should be at, it just gives us ideas of what you'd like to see. Okay, so I have a question. I'm sure people have thought of this, so I'm just bringing up the question. Are does the Planning and Zoning Commission take into account all of the township, including the village of Lake Orion? The village has its own Planning and Zoning. Oh, so okay. So it's just the township. Okay. So the corridor on M24, where the lake is, is not in your... Correct. Okay. I just thought I'd be clear on that Correct. to ask that question. Correct. I mean, not to say that, that, that anyone in the village can't go to the village. They have to do um, master plans also. 
um, and, and look for a collaboration. But yeah, it's definitely um, a different municipality than us. Okay. Are you on the same, are we on the same five-year schedule for the whole state? I do not know that. State? Okay. I, well, that's I can look it up for question. you, though. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> I can see. If I call you and ask you a question, you are going to get me an I answer. I will get you an answer. That is an awesome thing, that you would be able to do that. And somebody inquires and says, I'm thinking about doing this. You are the first point of contact. I spend a great deal of time on the phone. Um, I represent the township, and I work for the citizens, and um, I am there to to answer, be it citizen questions, developer questions. Um, okay, so I have an a answer. funny question. Okay. What's the most wild request you've gotten in the last oh. 10 years, or five years, uh, for an, an idea to come into the community? I don't know that I have anything off the top of my head. Oh, you don't? Okay. I don't. No circuses? No. Oh, okay. No. But did you did you know that that uh, for years the the railroad the only use in recent years has been um, when the circuit was circus was still coming to town they would walk the elephants down, down the, the railroad, railroad track? track railroad track that's fascinating yeah, that's the only recent use of of that railroad railroad track I'll be darned that's yeah. fascinating but no I mean, I don't think any any request is um, too strange I mean I, I think there's probably a place for everything. And that's where the zoning ordinance comes into play. Somebody calls, I need to look through that ordinance and see where would be an appropriate place. Okay. Um, and that's what zoning is, is, is you've got your resident. I always use um, a bullseye as, as an example of zoning. Um, the very center of the bullseye is where people, people have their homes. That's where they go to sleep and, and, and rest okay. and enjoy their picture life. Okay, picture a bullseye. Yep, picture a bullseye. Is the bullseye. And then as you come out a ring, it's something that would be more intrusive. So you go from single family on a large acreage to single family on smaller to multifamily where you've got a higher density to what is a little less, a little bit more intrusive would be an office. An office where it's probably nine to five and you don't have as many cars. So that's the next ring out. And then you run into your, your, re, your smaller retail, the nail salons and the beauty salons. Then you move another ring out, which is the car washes and the gas stations, and eventually you end up with the industrial. Okay. And so your goal in planning is not to have the industrial use next to your residential. Wonderful. Okay. That's a great way to look at it from the, as I said it earlier, this one's from the micro to the macro, and you have to plan that. That's a wonderful thing to put it. Is there anything else important besides please take the survey please online? Please take the survey. Um, and if, any questions? Any questions, reach out, as I said, myself or anyone else in the planning and zoning department. 391 right? Correct, and extension 5000 will get you directly to 5000, okay. Correct. I know the Parks and Rec one by heart now, <laughs> but 5000 is the planning. And you yes. got five years, five year plan. Okay, so I'm sure they're going to scroll the uh, township uh, moniker uh, website on there, and it is right as you open the website, it says master plan. You click on it. The survey takes less than 10 minutes, ask you a lot of questions that are pretty generally based. And keep an eye on the website also, we will have an open house. Um, we're planning for some time in April. Haven't set the date yet, hoping that the restrictions on public gatherings are lifted a little bit more. We would love to have it in person versus virtual. But okay. it will be an open house where the citizens are encouraged to come out. Um, we'll have maps, you put little sticky notes, and um, it, it is a great way um, to get ideas besides... Oh, so it's um, like a brainstorming session that is, you do for a business. Is, correct. Wonderful. Correct. And what's the date on the open house? We don't have it set yet. Right now okay. we're looking at the end of April, but we have not okay. actually set the date. Again, hoping that we are, are able to do that in person versus virtually. Okay. Watch well, the website. It, it will be watch posted the website. as soon okay. as we have that set. It will and be your it. social media? Is there a right. Twitter account also? You know what? You're talking to the wrong person. So yeah, I don't do Twitter. <laughs> I cannot say anything in 140 characters. <laughs> yes. That's not work for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, call us. Um, watch the website. There's there will be numerous opportunities, but definitely this this survey and picture this, which will be closing, um, as Chris said, mid to late um, March. And and so please take advantage of that. It, it does not take long at all, and your input is valuably needed. Okay. Well, it has been absolutely a pleasure to talk to you, well, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget to take your survey. This is Peggy. Thank you for watching Orient Outreach.